Hi, I'm Rory Delap, and this is my Six Aside team. I uh, might have to float a little bit. Um, more around the, the midfield, I think. Um, you know where the team have gone for. And they'll be able to get around and do the things I couldn't, hopefully. I played with the lucky enough to play with a, a lot of good goalkeepers, but I think the best um, I've ever played with was Ante Niemi at Southampton. Um, the best shot stopper I've I've seen. You know, the, the only thing probably going against him was his size. That he didn't probably end up at a real top club. You know, his distribution was good in those. You know, it wasn't a it wasn't a massive asked for thing in, in those days. But um, as a as a goalkeeper, he's the best I've played with. Uh, go go quite solid, I think. Um, probably as you, as you imagine, quite aggressive. Um, uh, I think Big Ryan, we've got to put him in. Um, you know, for the for the period um, I was I was playing at the club, he was immense. You know, got us off to a start. You know, Cardiff came in and, and, and put an impression on everyone straight away um, to go on and, and still be playing top level football. You know, for for a centre half, and he's had his injury problems, but. Um, Shows the kind of lad he is that he's, he's got through, got on with that, he's got through it. In those times I was playing with him, there wasn't a, a striker in the Premier League that was looking forward to playing against him. Mitting beside him again, another one um, from um, you know from back back in the day, Igor Stimak from that when I was at Derby. Um, again, another captain, um, another leader. You know, Igor was known for for how good he was on the ball, but. He was one of the most aggressive centre backs. Um, again, I played with. Um, again, could add everything. You know, he, he could play a 60, 70 yard ball into into space for you to run onto. Um, you know, he, he'd, he'd dominate people in the air and on the ground. He had quick feet um, for such a big fella, um, but he had a he had a presence around him as well. I played uh, with Roy Keane, luckily, with Ireland. Um, you know, I was there for, for a good period of his international career when, when, when I was in there. Um, and he could win, win the games on his own from that midfield role. You know, it, it wasn't an attacker or a defensive midfielder then. It was just, you were a midfielder, you were expected to do both. And I don't think there's many better than him um, at doing that role, both for his club and country. And, Sometimes that boiled over, but that was only because he had the, probably the, the most winning mentality I've ever come across. You know, he'd be, he'd be watching a game and you'd sort of be thinking this is going to be nil-nil or something, and he'd just he'd step forward and go and score like an unbelievable goal, or he'd drive through, go and smash, smash into someone, win the tackle, give the ball to someone who'd put it in the net, and um, you know, he, he, he was phenomenal. And you know, I think any teammate that's played with him, he'd probably end up in. A five or eleven aside um, team that is, if you've played with them. You know, it's, it's quite a solid team so far, so someone that's going to change a game and do something out of the ordinary. And um, I was lucky, you know, you know, probably Rick's a little bit lucky to, to miss out because he was he was one of those type of players. But um, again, I think Robbie Keane um, was, was, was that similar type of player who'd, who'd conjure something out of nothing. Um, you know, so I'm going to go with Robbie. He's, um, you know, the amount of goals he managed to score, and he, he, was, he wasn't an out-and-out out centre forward. He was more of a, I suppose, a false nine or a, a bit of a ten, you should call it now. But you know, in, in those days, he was, he was a striker. And, um, coming into the to the Irish squad, you could see from from day one that he was going to be a special talent and uh, had, a, had a really good career and still still playing. You know. He, wasn't much to him. He wasn't quick. He wasn't strong. You know, but he just managed to, to score so many goals and so many vital goals for the clubs he played for. Yeah, I think um, it might might be a bit of a funny one. This, but I, I grew up. Um, I, I wasn't really a, a Man United fan as such or anything like that. But um, Paul McGrath was was a real 
idol of mine when I was younger. Obviously played for Ireland. Uh, he was at United at the time when I sort of started following him and then, then went on to Villa and Derby. I just missed out on, on playing with him. But he was, he was a phenomenal player. Played against him um, a few times. Um, you know, and you, you sort of saw this man in the warm-up, if he ever did a warm-up, going out and you'd sort of think, he can't move today. You know, and everyone knows the problems he had with his knees and such, but um, the, the mental strength he had to, to go out and, and perform and perform to the highest level. Um, you know, you speak to, to like Niall Quinn, Kev Phillips, you know, um, people back in the day, they always say he was, he was the toughest defender to play against. He said he had pace, quality on the ball, um, and again, was really brave. He'd stick his head where others wouldn't. And, uh, you know, just, I just liked that as a kid. Um, you know, a lot of people went for strikers when you're a kid, the ones that score the goals, but I just admired, um, you know, everything he did. I'm Rory Delap, and that was my Six Aside team.